the great steppe, millenniums of events, hundreds of nomadic tribes and people. They lived, worked, made discoveries, conquered large tracts of lands and left us some mysteries. To learn more about it, watch project called Enigma of the Great Steppe. A figure of a warrior in golden armor is one of the symbols of sovereign Kazakhstan. It is a brand of the country which is well known around the world. Time has proven that this archaeological sensation is not the only one in our country. Later, remains of other notable warriors and shield maidens were found. They were dressed in golden armor, surrounded by horses, warrior equipment, and other attributes of royal life. The expression, Saka animal style, became associated with the golden archaeological findings, with gold. No matter how much time passes by, researchers still have questions. Can we talk about the golden army of the Saka people, as well as we talk about the terracotta army of the emperor Qin Shi Huang? Why did the Saka people bury precious metal? Is it true that nomads had the so-called immunity against gold? In the middle of the last century, the excavations of ancient burial mounds of the Altai Mountains led to unexpected and even sensational discoveries. Here in the fossil ice of permafrost, researchers found almost intact remains of a noble warrior. All golden items were made in the animal style, which is inherent to the Saka nomads. Ancestors of Turkic people mastered the technology of metal melting. And of course, they knew that oxygen is needed to achieve the suitable temperature. They were able to make this airflow system with the help of which the temperature increased. And they already had the technology of casting, which means that they were working with sand. In addition, in the Altai Mountains, the finest silk fabrics, garments made of felt and bright carpets were found. Here is what researcher Maria Zavitukina wrote about this discovery. Workmanship of the Altai artist in all areas of art is very amazing. It is clearly visible that it had been worked out during several generations. From the beginning of excavations of the Saka era, such category of items as golden clothing becomes one of the main discoveries, clothing as a golden suit. After two decades, one of the proficient modern archaeologists, Kemal Akishev, found the confirmation of the greatness of the Saka tribes in a completely inconspicuous mound of Isik. A group of scientists led by Kemal Akishev discovered remains of the young prince in military armor made of gold. Saka people wore high peaked turbans, very dense turbans, so that they stood up straight. They wore trousers and were armed with bows and daggers. In addition, they had sagiris, that is a kind of battle axe. This tribe, in fact, it was Scythian, was called Amirge Saka. It was clear that these remains do not belong to the ruler. The burial mound, Kurgan, was ruthlessly plundered and probably many times. Maybe its low height can be the result of this plundering. The least dilapidated burial was in the lateral section, and this was the reason of its salvage. More than 4,000 golden items were found in the burial of the ruler's descendant, and it is difficult to imagine what luxury armor had the ruler and what kinds of jewelry were in his sarcophagus. It is a ceremonial cloth. There are many controversial facts in the scientific world about the clothes of the golden man, that Saka used to put dead men in golden clothes. It was a funeral rite. But I do not think so. The fact is that before there was no such understanding as the death of people. Only animals and cattle died. People just come and leave. They believe that there is the world beyond. They dress the dead person in ceremonial clothes this person was surrounded by harness. Next to him or her, there were chariots, etc. So Saka people sent him to the world beyond. It is interesting, why did Kemal Akishev choose exactly this mound? There's a ridge of another hills that goes on for three kilometers. 
and their height exceeds Isik's height almost twice. Was it the intuition of the scientist, flair, or maybe the voice of the ancestors? Whatever it was, after this first finding of the warrior in a short period of time, as archaeologists say, there were found several unique golden people throughout the Great Steppe. About 10,000 pieces of jewelry were discovered. So, is it the evidence of existence of the golden army of the Saka people? Saadi, the Arab thinker, has one aphorism where he said, Mizr's gold emerges out of the ground where the Mizr goes under the ground. So in case of the nomadic civilization, it is vice versa. Our gold goes under the ground with its owner. October 1999, a trow step. Excavation works of the Mount Eral Tobe, which was called Shining due to its unusual shape. Here the archaeologist Zainola Samashev with the group found remains of the Sarmatian ruler and his wife. So the ally of Altin Adam, the golden man, was found. Weapon and horses were found in the tombs along with ammunition, and the skeleton of the golden eagle was found here. Golden eagle is a sacred bird for the Kazakhs. Male armor was embroidered with large and small golden and metal plates. It was decorated with figures of the totem animals. But this animal style is related to the mystery which is not yet solved. This style suddenly appears on the huge territory and in completed forms, which clearly indicates the long-term development. Numerous mounds of Shilikti Valley, remains of Saka aristocrats were found here. Scientists say the king was buried in one of these mounds. Plenty of jewelry made of cast gold is the evidence of this. The jewelry made of boar tusks is a symbol of supreme authority. This finding dates back to the 6th to 7th century BC. The professor Abdesh Toleo is sure that the Saka great culture and animal style was born exactly here near the Tabagatai Mountains. Perhaps this is the answer to the question of the Russian scientist. <laughs> As Kemal Akashev thought, it is the sun which we have in our hand. It is associated with the sun, and in ancient times the sun was of great importance. One of profane understandings is that when the Saka ruler wore his golden suit, he turned into the sun. I think that one of the French sayings of King Louis, when he said that he is the sun, I think it is for a reason. I think it is the Eastern influence because there were no golden burials and golden kings in Europe. In 2007, while laying highway in the Akmala region, the workers stumbled upon burial dating back to the 3rd and 4th millennium BC. It looked like the burial of the king by the configuration and layout. But archaeologists found remains of an eight-year-old child, dog bones and an arrowhead. Also, they discovered the skeleton of a woman. Presumably, she was a maid. Unfortunately, the little golden princess lost not only her family, but also all treasures which were buried with her. The tomb robbers took everything away. By the way, it's hard to tell when the burial mounds were plundered often, in ancient times or nowadays, when so-called black archaeologists have the latest technology. In 2010, researchers discovered remains of a warrior in the Taldi Mound. He is much older than the first golden man. Finding dates back to the 6th century BC. As Armand B. Senov noted, it was the time when Saka jewelry art appeared. He was named the Golden Man of Kanaganda. People called him so. We are talking about the cemetery Taldi, which is in the Karkarali region. The golden mounds of Saka and early Saka era, lots of golden jewelry were discovered there, including heavy cast items, a lot of small beads. To count all findings, including the small beads, there are around 36,000 findings. Some 
Saka nomadic tribes spared no gold for their rulers. They did not use foils, only pure metal. There were no reasons to conserve, because the Great Steppe was and still remains a storage of countless natural resources. All main mines in Kazakhstan, gold, copper, iron, non-ferrous and precious metals, all of them are located on the ancient mines. These are Zhizkazga, Central Kazakhstan and Eastern Kazakhstan. Or the reason of such luxurious burials was something else. Maybe the reason was in the special mentality which allowed precious metals to be buried in the ground. Maybe nomads really had the so-called immunity against gold. What happens when Saka era starts? What changes had to occur so that the ruler could become the sun? In his sunny clothes, golden clothes, probably he was shining. Now let's imagine, here are his people. Here is the ruler coming in front of them, Nauruz, the name of the Muslim New Year. In ancient times, Nauruz was a religious festival. It is associated with nature, with the renewal. We can imagine the Saka ruler came out in his golden clothes and people considered it as a sign of a continuation of life. Saka women had equal rights with men and it is proven by another valuable finding. Without mentioning this finding, our brief review of the Golden Army will be incomplete. Of course, we are talking about Altin Han Shaim, as archaeologists called her. 2012, Western Kazakhstan. Archaeologists led by Yana Lukpanova discovered the third mound of the early Sarmatian period. It was the tomb of Taksai Princess. By the way, the burial rite differed from those which were found before. The queen's body and precious clothes were burned. When the tomb was opened, the dust crumbled, as tells Krim Altenbekov. The grime was instantly picked up and blew away with the wind. So she would have remained a mystery to us. But no. Well, this project was implemented with the support of the Nogayev Nurlan Askarovich. He helped us a lot. We published the book. We were able to find the conservation, restoration, and reconstruction activities. A well-known archaeologist, Yabolonsky Leonid Teodorovich, who led the excavation works in the Filipov Mound, looked at the finding and said, Krim, these are two sisters. He also discovered the untouched tomb. It was richer than we found. There were some very interesting findings which could prove us with more knowledge about this monument. The restoration works lasted for two years. We even managed to restore the tattoo. Who was she? Princess or maybe daughter or wife of the ruler? Was she a great lady or priestess? Or maybe she was a ruler? Unfortunately, the scientists still cannot find the answers to these questions. However, Krim Altenbekov is more interested in the items the illustrious lady was surrounded by headdress, which looks like the Sao Kile, the headdress of Kazakh ladies. This headdress is crowned by the skillfully made figure of totem animal, Argali, or the mountain sheep. Polished mirror. Golden kitchen utensils. More than a hundred pieces of jewelry of delicate kinds, tiny beads, massive hangers on the peaked headdress many other jewelry works, a beautiful comb with inlaid wood of different types. We fully restored the image of the battles. It was the war between the Persians and the Saka people on chariots. We even managed to restore their faces. There are three persons, archer, coachman and Saka warrior in front of him. We restored it completely. This little one is the head were able to restore everything. Uh, 
2,5 мм мы все восстановили. We can say that exactly in this lab the golden man was reborn and Taksai princess literally rose from the ashes. Many archaeological findings also obtain the second life here. These findings are vestments of Saka rulers, warrior weapons and horse harnesses, filigree women jewelry and objects of worship. In general, most of the artifacts that have become pearls of the museum collections were restored in the Krim Altenbekov's laboratory. And not only golden items were restored here. Finding of identical jewelry with common thematic images made in the same technique in several geographic areas, which were distant from each other, confirms that the items of animal style of Isik is high art that was spread across the Simiriche region. An unusual project called the Golden Man was presented in Almaty six years ago. His armor was made based on all golden findings of the Saka period. Perhaps it was the first time when people commented on the golden army of the nomads. And of course, it is just a symbol. Scientists cannot confirm the existence of this army due to the lack of archaeological materials. Let us remind that about 8,000 sculptures of warriors were found in the memorial complex of the Emperor Qin Shi Huang. They replaced soldiers who had to leave with the tyrant to the world beyond. But nothing like these sculptures was found in the golden mounds of the Great Steppe. Horses, weapons, attributes of power, jewelry were buried with the rulers of the Saka people, but not people. Only in the Akmola mound the maid was found near the burial of the noble lady. Most probably this maid died with her mistress in the result of some illness. Archaeologists talking about the prime of the Saka culture do not mention human sacrifice. But the Saka people, of course, always tried to appease the gods. Вот тут вот этот как раз светильник, он и задает нам очень много вопросов еще до конца нерешенных. This boiler is the sacrificial altar. We have a lot of questions connected to this lamp. Most of these questions still do not have answers. Sacrificial carcass of the Argali or mountain sheep, yes, it is the Argali, is being torn apart by wolves. This not just a scene of the wolves eating the sheep, but it is really a sacrifice. The wolves most probably were the gods of the tribe who has built this altar. And here, look, the two ravens are witnessing the scene. This is fully consistent with one of the legends how the Kazakhs occurred. According to this legend, wolves were the progenitors of the Kazakhs and the ravens witnessed this. We could not find the evidence that Saka rulers were buried with their subjects or warriors. This means we should search the parallel with the Terracotta army in something else. Perhaps it is the number of golden warriors. Archaeologists still have to manage the tremendous work. There are thousands of mounds on the vast territory of the Great Steppe. Unfortunately, most of them have been plundered in two and a half thousand years. So now it is hard to say for sure how many soldiers were in the golden army. By the way, there is one more mystery of the Great Steppe, which has not been solved yet. Why nomad rulers were not buried in precious clothes, either before or after the period of the Saka tribes. The Great Steppe hides dozens of the richest burials, but note all of them refer to one era. How to explain the fact that kilograms of gold were buried? What was the significance of gold to the nomads of that time? Was it a subject of exchange or a sign of wealth? Maybe it was something more. Gold is a tireless pilgrim, accepting slander and fraud with pleasure, fulfill our desires. It is an interpreter of all languages, a skillful mediator, an irresistible charmer, a measure of people and things, fulfill our desires. It is a messenger of the peace and a sower of discord, allowing sloth and working overtime. It is an ally of virtue and depravity, 
fulfill our desires. Perhaps this quote taken from the book of the French politician of the 19th century, Paul Lafarge, Capitalist Prayers, characterizes the attitude of humanity to this metal in the best possible way. But Saka people had a different attitude. Of course, we can explain it in a more prosaic way. Kazakhstan had a great amount of gold deposits. And here we should mention the Altai Mountains. Herodotus mentions Scythians of those times as vultures guarding gold. Do you know this? Central Kazakhstan is rich in deposits of gold. It is the territory of the current Kokshetau and Pavlodar regions. Moreover, Saka people did not have militant neighbors like the Chinese Empire. And even if there were militant neighbors, they were far from the Saka territory. The steppe is enormous and has the richest mineral wealth. There were skillful steel workers. The jewelers' great-great-grandfathers forged fine jewelry horse harnesses and chains mail from the gold by request of nobility. But why from gold? This metal is soft and hardly can protect from the enemy's spears or arrows. Do you remember the episode written in the Old Testament when Moses smashes God's tablets when the children of Israel made a golden calf and worshipped it? This is an interesting point. We find nothing similar in oral epic heritage of the Turkic people and in nomadic civilization in general. Nomads have never had such dilemmas. Kemal Akishev called gold as warm metal which symbolizes the sun. But we know that this kind of worship existed among all ancient people. Historians know that the well-developed and progressive civilization was not born in Africa, but in the more northern parts, where there are sharp and significant climatic changes of seasons. This is the reason why the sun, that warms the person, was the basis of life and, of course, was at the level of one of the most important deities. The golden idols of the Aztecs, solar signs of the Incas, and of course Egyptian pharaohs in golden sarcophaguses, all of them are the symbols of reverence of the sun. But Saka people had their own peculiarity. As Efrat Imam Biak mentioned, they knew the moral and ethical aspect of the value of this metal. Like other civilizations, as civilizations of the Middle East or West, nomads did not worship gold. Gold had a deeper, sacral meaning to them. Of course, people used to collect and keep gold and then bequeath. But they easily return gold back to the ground, back to where it came from. This is one of the characteristic features of Tengriism. It is a vicious circle. Tengriism means harmony, that is, everything that comes from the ground is returned back to the ground. Well, perhaps therein lies the immunity. So where do the conversations about some kind of immunity come from? Well, firstly, there was not such a specific immunity. Because if you read all the works of folklore, epic genres and others, you can find that people always accepted gold with admiration. It's a sign of well-being. Gold, of course, is a synonym for wealth, fame, and prominence. There is no doubt of this. However, the researchers and anyone who is interested in history do not consider Saka jewelry and armor as ounces of the precious metal. These items are small parts of history, allowing us to look through the centuries-old veil of time. They let us learn more about the life of our ancestors, what kind of warriors and jewelers, pastoralists and metal workers they were. Recently, about one year and a half ago, the scientist Konstantin Chuganov, who arrived in Kazakhstan from St. Petersburg for a seminar before starting his speech, said jokingly, let me welcome Kazakhstan, the country of the golden people. 
This could be understood in two ways, the golden people who lived in the past or the people who are sitting in this hall. And everyone applauded. This is the reason of continuous studies of archaeologists who explore the length and breadth of the great and endless steppe. And the steppe, showing its gratitude for the hard work, reveals more and more secrets from year to year. But plenty of enigmas still need to be solved.